and welcome to Behind the Politics, a weekly podcast where we interview members of the Colorado Senate Democratic Caucus to learn more about their personal and political life. My name is Jill, and I'm the Civic Engagement Director for the Senate Democrats, and this is my colleague David, Hello. our Communications Director. So for our first episode, we're going to interview State Senator Leore Garcia. Hi, Senator Garcia, and thanks for chatting with us Hi, today. Hi, guys. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Uh, So, folks, uh, Senator Garcia actually represents Pueblo West and Pueblo. He was elected to the Senate back in 2014, and he currently serves on the Senate Agricultural, Natural Resources and Energy Committee and the Appropriations Committee. He's also our fearless Senate Assistant Minority Leader. He is also a former Marine, an Iraq War veteran, and a father of two. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive right in and chat a little bit about your home city of Pueblo. You're a hometown boy, as yeah. it is. Um, so if, uh, you know, I've only been in Colorado for a few years now, and uh, if someone were to go to Pueblo for the first time, um, what would you recommend they do? Well, first of all, Pueblo has some of the best places to visit. Um, you know, I'm a little biased, obviously born and raised a seventh generation Colorado. Um, really love Southern Colorado in general. But Pueblo is unique because it's just a fascinating community. community. Uh, one of our favorite places to attend is uh, Lake Pueblo. It's one of the top destinations in the state of Colorado. About 1.8 million visitors a year uh, for a lot of boating, fishing, barbecuing, camping. It's just a wonderful experience. Um, outside of Lake Pueblo, you know, there's just a number. You know, the great thing about being in Pueblo as you're not far from the mountains. So it's great to be 30, 40 minutes from somewhere like Colorado City or Rye or Beulah uh, and right in the, the, the backyard of the great Colorado mountains. Oh, that's, that sounds awesome. Uh, I presume you're taking your two boys uh, out there to go Lake Pueblo, you said, uh, to take, yeah. take them fishing or whatever? Oh, we love to go fishing. We, we spent a lot of time out there uh, boating, uh, working on our suntan a little bit, you know, nice. especially uh, <laughs> during these winter months. But... Oh, it's a great place. We enjoy the outdoors. Uh, there's a lot of biking routes out there. And so, yeah, it's one of my, one of my places to get away. Very cool. Um, you know, uh, any good re- restaurant recommendations? Uh, you know, I'd like to take my wife down there sometime. You can't go wrong if you're down in southern Colorado um, with any restaurant options. In Pueblo specifically, there's great Chinese restaurants, Mexican food, Italian food, um, Indian food. I mean, the cuisine is so great. What some people forget is the rich history and legacy of Pueblo and um, the ties to the Spanish culture, Mexican culture. Uh, and so it's really been this big, large melting pot really since the inception of the um, CF&I, the Stillman, which at one point was the largest producer west of the Mississippi of, of rail steel. And today is still one of the largest. And so, um, you know, for that reason, we're pretty fortunate to have a number of great restaurants The one thing that my wife and I seem to never agree on is where we should go to eat. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that's uh, that's true for you and your life. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Um, So, you know, you being a a Southern Colorado guy, why do you think Southern Colorado is so different than the rest of the state? I I feel like it has its own identity. No, I think that's that's an accurate uh, description. I think it's because politics plays less of an influence sometimes truly in Southern Colorado in a district like I represent Pueblo. Uh, People are focused on um, electing leaders who are going to get real results. It it reminds me a little bit of like uh, my time in the United States Marine Corps. Um, You didn't look to the left or to the right to see if someone was a Democrat or Republican. You were working uh, all in concert to ensure the accomplishment of the mission, the safety and well-being of your other Marines. And Southern Colorado takes on that personality um, and holds true to it. And so it's a district that I truly love. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of following on that, the topic of Southern Colorado, um, you know, I know another issue um, that's, you know, been very prevalent in Southern Colorado um, that you currently have a bill to try to help is... um, your, the, I'm sorry, the bill creates an um, opioid treatment pilot program. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the bill and what you're hoping to accomplish with oh. that bill? I think as we look across this nation and truly in the state, we find that there's a number of challenges in regards to opiate and heroin uh, use. It's on the increase. Uh, sadly, in southern Colorado and in Route County in this, in this state, we've seen even more so of an increase. Uh, 
Um, we are seeking to create a pilot project that would last two years uh, that would look to empower nurse practitioners and PAs to be able to provide treatment options um, for, for um, those who have the substance abuse. And, you know, I'm proud to say that it's uh, got out of the Health and Human Services Committee here in the Senate with, uh, with a lot of support. It's uh, now in Senate appropriations, and we feel the investment uh, is worth it. Now, I, I still work as a practicing paramedic, and so uh, it's important for us to remind people that, that the investment we make on, on the front end of providing treatment will help reduce the, the costs associated with health care when you have someone who overdoses and you're providing emergency medical services at that time, utilizing ambulances, utilizing your ER. And for many, they, they need this treatment option to exist. And what we have found is in rural Colorado, the options exist less than where they were, for example, right here in Denver. And so we're really excited about it and look forward to, uh, to getting it out of the Senate and off to the House and hopefully get signed by the governor. I hope so, too. Um, and, you know, this is just kind of a fun question that I'm going to ask you as we're wrapping up that we're going to try to ask all of our um, <laughs> senators that join us. Um, as you look back sort of on your time in the legislature, what's something that you laugh about? Boy, that's a, an interesting question. I, I think for me, one of the things is growing up, uh, even though my mom and dad were always telling me to you know, make sure you, you're reading, make sure you're reading, go, go. You know, you, you know, when you're growing up, that's one of the most important things parents push. Uh, and for me, many times I tried to get out of that. You know, it's, I, I wasn't dedicating the amount of time, uh, not wondering if it was going to be as valuable or as important as it is. Uh, boy, I'm glad I learned that lesson the hard, the the easier way. Because when I went off to college, right, you you read a lot, and you would think in college you read a lot, but nowhere in comparison to the general assembly. <laughs> I mean, you know, the volume of legislative uh, initiatives we go through. The fact sheets, and so I find it interesting now that I start my day uh, opening the paper and reading several different newspapers and reading what's online and blogs and all these different things for a kid who grew up kind of being a little resistant to not wanting to read um, the intricate and important role it plays here in the Colorado General Assembly. So for any kids who might be listening, uh, you should adhere to the advice of your parents and make sure you're reading. <laughs> That's a uh, good lesson. Uh, listen to your parents, kids. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for talking with us, uh, Senator Garcia. Sure and thing. Uh, thank you at home for listening. We will be back next week with State Senator Dominic Moreno, who is on the Joint Budget Committee. Until next time. <laughs>